Welcome back, welcome back. The Normal Distribution. What a weird name. It sort of suggests that all other distributions are abnormal. Well, that's a bit uh, not really true. It's called the normal distribution. Well, one reason, I guess, is that it does occur in nature pretty often. If you go and measure the length of penguin eggs just when they hatch and sketch it out, you'll probably get pretty close to a normal distribution. There are uh, other distributions that occur in nature as well, but the normal does pretty often. It's also pretty convenient from a statistical point of view. Well, here's a picture of the normal distribution, this beautiful bell-shaped smooth curve. In principle, it actually goes off to infinity in both directions, getting thinner and thinner in the tails. But um, usually we just look at the middle hump bit, that's the only bit that's really uh, uh, relevant to our data. Now, this smooth curve, how can we think about it? Well, I could draw some dots under it like that, and that suggests that, well, these are all the measurements potentially we could take. So let's say here we have a population, which means a very large set we're interested in, a population of pain ratings, or the pain rating of a whole lot of people who've got, say, some terrible knee injury. And uh, we tend to assume that the population's infinite, even though in real life, mercifully, there aren't an infinite number of injured knees out there. And I can't draw an infinite number of dots here, but I've got a large number. You get the idea. So we've got most people around about the middle here where this curve is highest, certain number a bit below, a bit above, and others are way down in the tail, just a few or way up at the top. This is a symmetric distribution, and it has a mean of um, 50, this highest point there. And I can mark standard deviations, one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below. And in fact, this distribution has a standard deviation of 20. So 70 marks one standard deviation above the mean of 50. In fact, if I tell you the mean and the standard deviation, I've defined the normal distribution uh, perfectly, fully. And I could now, for example, reduce the standard deviation. What's going to happen? This distribution is going to become narrower and sort of hump up like that, make it wider. The vertical scale is changing, but uh, just focus on the width as I change the standard deviation. If I change the mean, of course, the whole thing is just going to move left or move right. So the hump distribution might be a bit wide or narrow, but it's still a normal distribution if it has this basic shape. Here's a, um, a different normal distribution. This is a distribution of IQ scores. Now, most IQ tests and many other tests are scaled so that the distribution in some reference population, like all Western adults who are healthy, uh, has um, a normal distribution. And for IQ scores, very often they're scaled, so we have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And here is that distribution. Now, that's of interest because, in fact, there are a few interesting rules of thumb, values of uh, valuable rules of thumb to understand this distribution. About 34% of all cases fall between the mean and plus one standard deviation. In other words, about a third of the population will have an IQ between 100 and 115. Another third, because this is symmetric, will have an IQ score between 100 and minus one standard deviation, 85. And one further uh, useful rule of thumb is roughly 95% of people will have IQs between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above. So between 70 and 130, about 95% of people, which means we've got 5% in the tails, 2.5% in each tail. And once you get beyond three standard deviations, then you're looking at just a couple of people in a thousand, so really quite rare. 
Although in practice we have to be a little careful because typical data sets may fit the normal distribution reasonably well, but if they don't fit, it's probably out in the tails they don't fit. So we shouldn't get too hung up about exactly what's going on out in the tails. Still, here are some um, good rules of thumb. About a third within one standard deviation of the mean and about 95% within a range going from two below to two above. This also means if you've got some distribution, you can sort of lop off a little bit at each end, take the remaining range, divide it by four, and you've got a bit of an eyeballing of the standard deviation. That's another way to think about the standard deviation. So there we are, the normal distribution, another beautiful curve. Statistics is full of these wondrous things, and this normal distribution is just another one of them. Enjoy.